Hello, Rem to the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all over the world. This is episode number 196. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Welcome, everybody. We're sitting here in the middle of the icy Ozarks. <laughs> We've had, we had quite the little ice storm here in Seymour. Uh, we didn't have quite so much uh, where we live between here and Marshfield, but they lost power. We, we lost power here. We came over yesterday to, to check on everything, and I had things in the refrigerator and the freezer I wanted to make sure I took out of there. But um, you know God's so faithful, Mike, because um, we actually had some trouble with roads that were starting on Friday and our daughter had an appointment she had to go to and I sat there and watched on the map there was this little hook on the radar <laughs> and the whole path of where she went there it was nothing and then she came back and then everything started and then in. the ice came well, in well and I just I just want to praise God because he he's so faithful guys and he he performs his word and if it means doing miracles and and uh, blocking this and stopping that and surrounding you with angels, he'll do it. We've seen it so many times with, like, tornadoes and things that are, you know, looks like the radar. Boy, this thing's coming right for us, they're saying. And then there's just this little yeah. little opening there, and God guards us. And that kind of ties right in with what we're going to talk about today. I'm pretty excited about what God's showing us, and we're so thankful uh, for all, all the listeners, all our partners in the ministry. You guys just mean the world to us. And we're praying for you, and... Um, I'm I'm not going to be able to keep up with all the emails, are we, sweetheart? We've no, got, it's humanly impossible. We've got thousands coming in from all over the world, and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and put an automatic another automatic response. I'm past my season of of that intense fasting and prayer, but I'm going to go ahead and have to put another one on that just uh, you know just a f- couple of sentences is all they'll let you put on that. And I'm just going to put where. Because of the thousands of emails, it's impossible for us to respond. But what I am uh, committed to do is I'm going to daily run through that as fast as I can in the middle of everything that's going on and get those prayer requests out of there. So um, I may not be able to respond. Um, if there's something that I I can clip and paste somebody really quick, some prayers or something, I, I think I'll be able to do that. But I I there's no way I can keep up with the phone requests. Um, and so just know if you'll, if you'll leave your prayer request for me, then I will, yeah. I will go ahead and get those because there's some things here locally that God's, um, already said, I need you to work on, on these things. I want you to do this. And, and so I've got to be obedient to what God's saying, but, um, he'll show me if there's yeah. something that's a critical issue or something, he's, he's going to show us what to do. I'm having to do much of the same thing, uh, simply because if, uh, if I, if I'm going to write books, I can't set and answer emails all day, and then a lot of it um, is stuff that we've already covered that's already out uh-huh. there on the internet. Well, uh, I think I think people just don't know where you know they just don't know where to ask questions, yeah. and it's it's just people really. I, I think people are really uh, wanting to find some help. Yeah, and so I I believe we're in in the time when God's going to raise up people though in specific areas that people can can go to um, that are right on the cutting edge of what's what God's doing right now, that there's going to be answers. There's going to be, um, you know, sections of, of the country, sections of states where, where God's just raising up people. And so and I think we're going to see people raised up that are, that are real powerhouses as prophetic, uh, mm-hmm. as, as intercessors and stuff that will raise up that can yeah. do uh, phone ministry and things like that. Well, and, and, you know, as far as like uh, ministering to people that are victims of SRA, victims of mind control, Mike, there's only one way that you can help one on one with that, and it's it's prophetic insight, yeah. because they have built in uh, so many fail safes and programming, and people are different. Their programming's different. That I'm there are certain certain things that will be the same. Yeah. So principles of the word that can be applied, but but we're going to have to. We're asking God to raise up people, and I I believe He is. I, I and most too. of them probably nobody even knows about yet. God's just having them on the you know the backside of. Um, of the mainstream ministry, learning things and and getting the information they need. So have hope because God's really moving, isn't he, honey? He is. Uh, Before we get going today, uh, I want to remind everybody here the Watchman Conference that's coming up pretty quick down in Dallas. 
They have an outstanding lineup today. Uh, Mike Kerr has given us a special promotional code that we get to use uh, in January only. And so if you go to uh, www.hearthewatchman.com and use Lake 30 code, you'll actually save $30 on that ticket. It's only good for January. After that, it will go down to $20. And so if you're planning on going, now's the time to get to save you an extra $10. You know, when up. One of the things that really caught my eye this morning, I was, I was kind of going over some news items in my aggregator. And over in China, uh, they said that China's begun closing down all the Christian churches. They're putting the pastors in prison and that they have begun rewriting the Bible. Mm. And, of course, I kind of see we, <laughs> some of the translations that we have come out. They're almost kind of doing that today. But one of the, what I thought, well, one of the conundrums that we have, and I have one of my personal pet peeves, is that the last probably – decade, decade and a half, the quality of the Bibles that you can get had just kept on going down and down and down and down. We'll come to find out that also correlates with all these companies begin printing them all in China. Mm. And at the same time, when is when are, when the Chinese going to begin rewriting and making certain corrections in the Bibles they're even printing for America? Uh, because we already, we already see the, the lack of respect that they have for the word and what they're doing. And uh, they almost, almost really get a high-quality Bible. You almost need to go with the Cambridge or an Oxford ones well, that you, are printed in England. I think what we're going to see is a transition in the coming years um, because I do believe that God's going to gonna, uh, show himself powerful in this nation for his kingdom purposes heading toward those, the, you know, the end of times. Yeah. And I think that as that happens, we're, I've always felt like that we are supposed to be a place where people persecuted from all over the world that are Christians could journey here, and God is going to establish safe places. And um, so I think that there there would be a lot of transitioning of things coming back over here to be manufactured. That was one of the things that President Trump was was big on, and I know they're fighting him, and there's there's still things that they're trying to take overseas and stuff. But But if we can get many of the things manufactured here again not only would it provide jobs but you know we've talked about our electric grid and and we can see how how easily that can go down with what we've just seen here you know we had a major it was it 6 years to the day that they said that the, that the ice storm we just had was that one where you were in in Canada, Canada and I was home and uh, I started feeling you know that week I thought oh there's I better start getting ready so I I filled canisters full of water and I had drinking water and we had a, a fireplace insert that was gas we had uh, gas heat that obviously wouldn't work because it was on electric but uh, I had the the gas kitchen stove we had a, a heater down in the basement that worked so I just made plans accordingly and and I brought uh, Steph and her family over and even though you were gone we everything was fine we we could flush the toilets we had uh, I had the grill working on the outside and we just had everything just yeah, like gas it was. fireplace really helped. Yeah, the only thing is we you know we couldn't take a shower or anything, so we just had to bathe with like the old time bath that you took in the sink, <laughs> like I was when I was a kid. Uh, but we can see, and what happened is yesterday when we came over, the electric was running when we got here, and we could tell it had been off. But yeah. when we were here, we heard this huge boom, and it was a transformer blowing. And on the news, they had said they were blowing all over the place. I think as they, were, like trying, popcorn almost. As they were tr trying to, to fix one place, there was an overload here and things. And I, I don't know a lot about how that works, but I do know that, they, that there have been reports that many of the components of our electrical grid are made in China. Yeah. So if it went down, and we were, what if it was a war, and China has... <laughs> You know, we need and we're to, at war with China. We need to yeah. get those things manufactured over here. The things that we need to function as a nation, those critical things, our electric grid, we need to get those components made over here. So I've been praying for about that for a long yeah. time, asking and God our, to. Our military has been scrambling because a lot of the components for some of our fighter planes and different things they're finding out were some of the things were outsourced to China. And you don't know what that's what, kind of scary. That is scary because <laughs> yeah. all it all it takes is is one one line of code or something added to to a, a firmware or something, and they could shut down a the, an entire uh, well, ship if they wanted and to. And you know what? That's that's where we're so thankful for the faithfulness of God, because as long as He's got 
his people praying, agreeing in prayer and standing against the enemy's plans, he's going to have his will done. And now we know that there was a, another agenda going on here in America, that's for sure. Uh, they're fighting and scratching to hold on to it, but I got news for him. God's got another plan, and his people are, you know, he was waiting on his people to, to see truth, to stand up, and to take their authority. And that's what's going on. That's why I have total faith we're going to get this thing turned around. It won't matter how they lie and, and what the media does or people screaming. Um, it doesn't matter because yeah. because our side is already won. We're, we've yeah. already got victory. We just have to enforce it through de- declaration of the word. We do, and we, we, we can't lay down arms. It's time that, you know, with, with – uh, God took us to Deuteronomy, or took you to Deuteronomy, and, and uh, there, there are biblical patterns that we can see of, of how God moves, and one of, the, one of the neat ones is in Deuteronomy. Why don't you go ahead and read, because this deals with the 11th month. Yeah, this is the, uh, one of the scriptures that I found when God was talking, uh, talking to me about, look at what happens during the 11th month. So I went through the Bible, and so we, we wanted to have this podcast for last, because to me, this is the big encouragement. Um, it's Don- Deuteronomy chapter 1. Verse 3, and it says, It came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. And what he, what he does is he goes back over. This is, this is all the things that God did for us on this side of the Jordan. So he's, he's reminding them, you know, took out Og. <laughs> and all these, all these things were these, the giants. ones that were giants. And so they took them all out, but then there was this process that they were going to go through to go on into the yeah. promised land. And, you know, they, they had had a little trouble there because when he sent the, the spies in to spy out the land, you know, only Joshua and Caleb came back and said, hey, we can take them. The Lord's going to give us the strength. The rest of them were saying, listen, we can't take these dudes. They're too big, <laughs> you know, and so. And I, I think there's a, a, a transition period because what mm-hmm. we see is God supernaturally delivered them out of Egypt. They didn't have to they didn't have to lift a finger to get out. God takes them to the wilderness, he cuts a covenant with them. And there there's some warfare that you have, I, I believe it was the Amalekites, if I'm remembering right, would come behind them and would kill the stragglers and stuff. Uh, but they never actually had to face real conflict. And so Moses takes them up to the Jordan. And says we're getting ready to cross, and you're going to have to fight because now God is going to work with you. And see that that's a New Testament principle. The end of uh, of Mark, it said God worked with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders. It's always God wants to work with us, not just for us. Mm-hmm, that's right. And and so to to have an anointing to take the promised land, that Joshua type of anointing, we have to, to develop the mindset. He's the king. I'm I'm under him. He's the chief shepherd. Is as uh, Peter calls him, and that we're we're under shepherds underneath him, and we we have got to we have got to follow his direction, and we're going to expect uh, the kingdom of God to flow as we're doing spiritual warfare, as we're standing up for truth, and there was a whole different mentality required once they crossed the Jordan, and they refused, and they actually made allegations against God that you're taking us over there so that our our, our little kids will get killed. And uh, really, it angered the Lord. He said, you know what? You're going to die in the wilderness. But the very kids that you accused me of, of taking over the kill, they're going to go take the land. Well, and that's, that's what's getting ready. He's yeah. going to use to take the land now. And so for that, that 40 <laughs> years in the wilderness, the <laughs> old guard died. And we, we kind of see that in America that we have seen a lot of things go on, that they took prayer out of school, they, they approved abortion, and so many, so many other things. Uh, we allowed radicals to take over our universities. Uh, that was done on the old guard that, that uh, you know, God had done some great revivals back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and they, they, they kind of they were lulled to sleep. And it's so easy to do because... Well, the, the masses were, were going against him. There's yeah. always been a remnant and mighty believers that, that are flowing with God's kingdom, but, Mike, the, the power that was built in the occult... Yeah. You know, over well, this last 70 years, my Well, look at, you look at the 1960s was an occult revival. Was mm-hmm. You know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll is, well, and that was, is, is the occult. That was a result of these beginning things when they brought the people over on paperclip and mind control and yeah. all those horrible things. Anytime you get that going and there's this, this secretive, you know, world that is occurring right in front of everybody's eyes, they just can't see it. 
then then there's where the occult power comes up. There's where generations are lost and they get into sex, drugs, and rock and roll and and things like that. And so we can, we can look back, hindsight, you know, 2020, and you can look back and say, "Oh, I can see how it's done now." So this is not. Um, and well, when you look at all the all the all the young people, the ones that were like 18 through 25 that were a part of the 1960s that didn't find Christ because there was a great revival right. after that all went into Bill Ayers, you know, teaching at university and, and, and they, they went into government, they went into law, they went into all these things. They still have the exact same ideology they had gleaned from the 1960s. Well, and it's not against those older uh, Christians as far as I'm concerned, because I think, I think it was a setup, yeah. you know, from the, the depression days, you had a whole generation of people that, you know, they were lucky to put food on the table. So what did Satan do? He put up here all these sparklies and said, if you just get these material things, you'll feel better. If you just have yeah. these material. And so that was kind of their focus, you know, and, and they just thought, well, this is what's good for our kids. We've got to make a, you know, a more prosperous thing. And and uh, not that God doesn't want us to have good things, but if we ever get centered in on that, you know, it's it's material things, it's this, it's that, we lose yeah. sight. We at, lose the, at the same time, what I document in the Shiner Directive, they, they were not aware that they were, Edu- academically, they were dumbing everything mm-hmm. down. They mm-hmm. were uh, they were contaminating seminaries. They were they were and, that, and all of a sudden you see this great proliferation of all these new Bibles and uh, things since since the '60s, all coming out and being being developed. That there's a lot of question about some some of them. As I mean, there's even a feminist Bible now that's just reworking everything to where it's all matriarchal instead of patriarchal, mm-hmm. and that God's a woman. And you know, it's like if they don't like what God said, they're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and they're deciding for themselves. Yeah, and they're just going to say, "We're just going to rewrite the Bible and make it say what we want," which yeah. is exactly what China's doing that's, today. That's true. And boy, talk about danger. Oh, absolute um, danger. But what what encourages me is because we know that God, He does work according to his timeline yep. and there's there are patterns we know that there are patterns there's patterns with the feasts there's a pattern with the first of the year there's all these things and and so my my thought is okay god's saying i'm getting ready to take you to a good place <laughs> now now it's not going to be without a battle and and we're still in the battle right now because i mean these these people are just dead set on getting president trump out of there and you know there's lots of questions lots of things on the internet that says oh is he part of this is he just secretly behind and he's one of these people well i i don't i didn't know that when everything started i mean i don't know who's who on on all this stuff and so i did a lot of praying about it but one thing's for sure anytime you you come across demon possessed people which we have and they hate him the, it just like the demons will glare. You think they're just going to pop out their ears. There's such a hatred for this man. You can kind of take from that. Maybe God's doing something with him. Yeah. And when you look at them, they, 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 they put down like Alex Jones and some of these on the, on the liberal side on MSNBC. Uh, there are some people on there that, that make Alex Jones look very calm mm-hmm. and very tranquil. And they're on the left side and they're coming up with all these things. They've been talking about impeachment before, Before he ever he ever, ever took there. office, so it's well they could they couldn't accept that their agenda got interrupted because this was supposed to be foolproof that Hillary was going to be in there. This is why they're fighting the border so much. Uh, it, and there was a global awakening against globalism because they they yeah. needed that border completely open. Yeah, they needed it. You know, as far as like um, uh, somebody told me the other day, there was a report and they said that the, they're building the wall to keep us in, keep us in from what. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you going to go to Mexico? <laughs> yeah. With with the way that they, they, they've done if things. If they there. were going to build a wall like that, it would be everybody going to Canada. Well, you're going to go to Canada where you can't even say the name of Jesus out on yeah. the street? This what, what I'm saying is we've got to fight from where we're at. We there's, there's a reason that God's raised people up. God doesn't do anything for no reason. Yeah. You know, he could have just healed me. Not, you know, I could have just took a pattern of healing, not raised up against anything I raised up against, and just he could have took me that way. Yeah. So if all we were doing is sitting here and waiting, well, we're just going to get taken over and we're just going to, we're just going to, you know, this is the last days, and there's not a thing you can do about it, then why raise people up? Why would God do this? Why is he raising people up in might and power and strength? And, and with what I believe is a Joshua anointing coming on this generation. There's a jo- there's anointing, as I'm saying, that there's a Joshua anointing coming on this generation. Because what we've been doing is we've been fighting Og. 
Yeah. We've been fighting these, giants. the giants. We've been fighting all this stuff that they've set up and mind control and, and technology that they think can't be overrode. Well, I got news for them. There's one yeah. that is the king of, of the universe that can override any of their technology. He yeah. can put shields up that there ain't nothing they got can get through. And I, what I see when I look at the generation that uh, Moses was dealing with in Deuteronomy, I, I look at it as the awakened remnant. They're awake. Okay, they're they're dealing. They've 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 confronted giants. Okay, there there's there's real battle going on. They're learning the art of war before they go over because they're really going to need it over on the other side. That's part of the, what we're, we're we're seeing this awakening. And uh, when we when we turn off the Babylonian babble, which is which is all it is, you know, one of the things that just absolutely blows my mind is they keep on saying Trump said Mexico was going to pay for the wall. It really is but it's on the southern border of Mexico. See, the, nobody has covered. They, they, they refuse to bring it up. No, but he was, he was talking about yeah. the wall between but, us and them, but, you're, but, uh, I know but what every, you're every, everything that we're dealing with primarily is coming through the border of Mexico coming up to us, and that the president of Mexico just approved $30 billion to build a wall on their southern mm-hmm. border to close up that, so you're not going to have all of South America hemorrhaging in through Mexico into us. So in, in a, and, But they, they refuse to acknowledge that, which will solve a lot of those problems. And Mexico believes in a wall. And other nations, historically, uh, they believe in a wall. And so uh, I, think, I think people are awake enough to realize y'all are crazy. You know, you build well, walls around your own property, but you're saying that a wall at, the, at our southern border won't work. I heard years ago some reports about we're coming into an ice age. And they say that everything's going to shift down and to where, like, where they don't think that there'd be people be able to have farms even where we are, that everybody would have to go south. I don't know if that's why. I didn't read an article. I just had somebody relaying to me some things. But I, but I can tell you this. Um, God claims this nation. Yeah. And because he's claimed it, he'll protect it. And, and there's one of the reasons that, that you know, there's going to be a place to at least fight from. I, I can promise you this. Even if we have all kinds of stuff going on around us, here in the Ozarks, there is a place that God's establishing that people can fight from because we can have everything we need from right here. There's there's a food source here that God God can ensure we can grow crops. You know, if Elijah's standing there and you know quits raining, and he'll start to rain again. <laughs> I mean, God's in control of that weather, and I don't care whether they have harp. And all these things, I've seen prayer stop the heart project. Yeah, it can it can and, supersede it. Right, and so my my thought is this: you know, like what I believe God's showing us about this eleventh month is Moses was saying, okay, now you you've got to keep the commandments, you've got to be obedient because that's the only way you're going to be able to take the land. So what what have we been doing? You know, these last years is how do we get back? to the truth of the word, and what is our requirement from God? What is he saying are, are the commandments we are to follow? You know, it's like I say, put, put what Jesus accomplished right on top of that Old Testament, and there's, there's things that didn't change. There's no place, if you like you've taught in Scripture, there's no place, no matter what somebody says about Peter's vision and all that, that it's saying that, you're not, you, that you're, you can eat unclean meat now and things like that. There's, there's health issues, there's safety issues, and everything God put in his word. There's some things that, that Jesus said, I fulfilled it right there. This requirement for what, what was being done then, it's fulfilled. But there are other things. It's just, you know, God, God knew what was safe for all of us. He knew what was good for us to eat. So those things aren't going to change. No, it, the you principle know, is still the same. There's people saying that the Ten Commandments aren't for today. Are you kidding me? Or that the early apostles unhinged the church from the Old Testament? Well, then they had nothing. What are you? Because what, it was three centuries later before they had a yeah. New Testament. I mean, so it doesn't. You know, so we've we've seen what God's doing. Through, is he is he's getting us reestablished in? Okay, how how can we be obedient? We want to make sure we know what. We are to be obedient to. So he's establishing that. And so what God's, what God was doing through here, Moses, is, is he's going back and he's saying, God gave us this victory. God gave us this victory. Look at what God's yeah. done. And I've had to do that in our lives. 
you know, there's been times when, when things aren't going so well and, and I'm pressing in and praying. And boy, the first thing God does is he says, remember what I did here? Remember what I did here? Look what I, how I kept you alive here. And I'll go back in my mind. It's just like, like one of those little Rolodex. Boom, boom, boom. God says, look where I protected you here. Look where I met your needs here. And over and over. So he's doing that with with these people so to build their faith that the same God that brought you through all this gave you all these victories he's getting ready to to take you and give you give Joshua this anointing follow what you're supposed to do and he's going to let you take the land and that's what we're in the process of going to we're going to get a Joshua anointing and we're going to stand up and say I forbid this to go on in this land anymore I declare that Jesus is Lord Almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's Almighty God. He's the God over this land, and we're going to take it with a Joshua anointing. You know, one of the neat things about Deuteronomy is it's not just him just, you know, rehashing their victories and learning from history, and there's and we're beginning to regain our history the same way we have in Deuteronomy, but it was also a, a condensed version, a Reader's Digest version of the Torah, of the law that he was giving. And before, you know, I, I want to read the first part of Deuteronomy 28 here in a minute, but the end of, of 27, he begins pronouncing curses that, uh, that uh, people are, that people say amen that we're agreeing with. And one of the ones here in 18 says, Cursed is the one who makes the blind to wander off the road. Mm. And... I think this is one that we need to to stand on for the occult that have taken away the path and the roads of righteousness to where the, the, the blind can't even follow them to begin finding repentance. And then the very end of it, of Deuteronomy 27, is cursed is the one who does not confirm all the words of the law by observing them. And we need to understand, he gets into this whole thing of blessing and cursing. We, Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross for us solved the sin principle. It freed us from this, from the iniquity force, from the, from the internal conflict that we always wanted to lean towards sin. We, we wanted to eat the tree of the knowledge of good, and we were going to decide for ourselves. And we were set free from sin, and what, what uh, New Testament preachers today don't really preach a lot of, it freed us to walk in the commandments of God. And so then in Deuteronomy uh, 28 and 1, here's the promise. Now it shall come to pass, if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall be upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the voice of God is revealed two ways. Primarily, it's revealed in the written word of God. Secondarily, when God speaks to us, but God will never say something contrary to his word. That's right. If, that, if you're hearing a voice that is contrary to the word, it is another spirit. Yeah, and a lot of times they'll come and say, ooh, I've got a new revelation for you. But how, how we can <laughs> turn these things around right now in America, I think a lot of things from 9-11 on, because of, of their rebellion and disobedience, the hands of God have, have, have begun lifting off of America. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's also this dynamic that we see all throughout the Torah of the individual walking with God. And the more of us that are walking with God, the more of us in this nation that become salt and light in the earth, we begin to create a sphere of God's blessing and God's protection around us. That's right. And the more of us that there are in this nation and the more serious we become about living our faith in front of the public, the more it can create protection back in this in America. Before it was like, uh, it was like you know coming out of Egypt, that it was it was just done by God, and a lot a lot of them that really didn't have to fight that hard because the protection was already there because of what some of our forefathers had did even before what we call the forefathers, when the pilgrims and many of them settled in the land they were Christians, and they and I, I've got documentation in my library from books of uh, that record of that era. Uh, of what they were writing, and they said the law of God, the commandments of God would be the law of the land. And so that was, that was a covenant established over this nation. And because, because of what's going on, as that begins to lift, 
Now we see when Israel's moving into the promised land, it's, it's an anointing on the family, on the individual, and the more of them that you get going together, the greater it becomes. That's right. It's, it's like what we talked about on the podcast last one or the one before that where the, the agreement matters, whether it's the agreement in the kingdom of darkness and you get people agreeing with what that wants yeah. or you're coming to agreement with what God's kingdom wants. Because a lot of times you, you are speaking contrary to what's right in front of your eyes. You, you can look, if you just listen to the media and you didn't have any alternative media or any place to, to know about mind control and you just listen to the media, it'd be very easy to start speaking in flow with that agenda. But if you, if you know differently, it's like, you know, one of the things, and I've heard from people all over the country, Mike, that um, and around my age that a lot of us for a Christmas present got a Ouija board. And so it wasn't just, you know, in that controlled area where I was from. I mean, that, that was just something. Now, where were the, where were the churches? Where, why weren't the churches saying, you don't want to mess with this? You don't want to mess with anything where you're con- trying to contact spirits or contact the dead. Or I remember when we'd have seances. We, I mean, it was just full of the tr- in the churches. And, and that's an old reflection of what was going on in the 19th century. They, they were having a lot. There was spiritism begin to really explode within, mm-hmm. and that, that that was one of the mind viruses that the Illuminati released preparing for the 20th century. And there were churches, uh, the, the, it wasn't hidden, it was a part of their service. They were having seances in churches, and they were right. bringing mediums in and, and all these different things. That's one of the reasons Pember uh, wrote his his great book on, on the last days of planet Earth and uh, connecting it back to Genesis 6, mm-hmm. because he was seeing a repeat of that in the 19th century. And it, it's still going on today. And that's why that's why that we have got to repent. That's why we still need to be asking God to forgive the sins of the nation, the sins of those in power, uh, the, the sins of, of uh, any occult. Because one of the things that's going on that I have, I have seen uh, since Trump got into office because their plan was derailed because globalism is an occult promise. It's an occult vision. Mm-hmm. Uh, it goes all the way back well, to Plato, and even before it goes all the way back to it's Nimrod. The plan to get everything ready for the Antichrist. Yeah. and so he he derailed that. And what what a lot of people haven't realized is the occult, which which are they are very very diligent and dedicated mm-hmm. uh, well, to their to, to their faith to their practices. They have to be, uh, and then they and they will plan over multiple generations to get something done. And the occult have gone into overdrive because they blame evangelical Christianity uh, for derailing that and, and one of the reasons that Hillary did not get in and, and globalism did not continue within the consciousness of, of, of much of America. And so they have been attacking Christians spiritually in an unprecedented way, not just nationally, but internationally. Uh, there, there have been things that have been revealed uh, to where there have been calls of the occult globally to come against something Trump was doing mm-hmm. or globally against this thing or globally against uh, that because it's, it's, it's touching the gem of their eye, which is this, this, this occult global governance. Right, and it has and to flow, you know, together. And has to flow it has together. Has to be a continuity, or or their plans fall apart. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are are really sensing a rise in the level of spiritual warfare mm-hmm. because they have gotten very they that for a while they got they got very uh, at ease because they thought they had us under control we were asleep and everything else uh, but now there's there's the remnant is beginning to rise worldwide they're That's beginning right. to pray they're beginning to return to the ways of God they want to honor Jesus and everything that they do they want to have a biblical life just like the word of God says and they're beginning praying over their leaders like the Apostle Paul told us to pray over our leaders. Yes, that's right. Uh, so that we could have peaceable lives. If, mm-hmm. if, uh, and and we you know, begin sharing things like that, asking God that everything hidden be revealed. And that's, that's something it. that we still need to be praying. We still need to be doing yes. these things. And daily asking forgiveness for the sins of every person in the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, all of these these groups. And as we've done that, as you've seen that people across the the, the our nation, and even those around the world that are praying for America. As we do that and ask God to reveal the hidden, what's coming out? They yeah. can't even, they, they're getting so sloppy that, that they can't even hide it. Yeah. And, you know, when we, we talked on the last podcast about, uh, you know, the pedophilia rings being being uh, caught, mm-hmm. and we, we were in no way dismissing that there, we already talked about with Craig Sawyer and many what they're doing. Uh, there was just a report this week where they, 
uh, that one was busted, and they, they freed 128 children. And some of the, what's amazing is some of the kids, according to this report that I read, said that some of the kids had never been reported missing. Mm. Uh, which is really a tragedy. It's, well, it's, it's, didn't it's, they uh, attack Craig Sawyer's website? Or oh yeah, he's he's under constant uh-huh. harassment by by uh, by Silicon Valley yeah. constantly because well, and, of what he's doing. And there are reports. I mean, we've heard this through Infowars in different places all along. And Hagman and Hagman, there are they are arresting more and more. We've had yeah, but I don't uh, know how many like school teachers in our area that they have found child pornography with and stuff. So it's it's working, but what we've got to keep on pressing in is let it let them go find those rabbit trails. Yeah. Let them go all the way to the top because these are low-level people. Yeah, and in fact, I read a report up in Arizona that this one guy is doing a lawsuit. He's saying that the entire child protection agencies, the the whole like mm-hmm. DFS that wouldn't surprise in, me. In, in, uh, in that state is a part of a pedophile ring and how he was abused, and there's a multi-million dollar suit against the state over it. And so there are a lot of those it's things going on, but but these are, what I, these are what I call low fruit. Mm-hmm. What I'm looking for goes will go into the UN. It will go into the highest yeah. political, uh, religious systems, yeah. financial systems. I mean, corporations, big it's corporations. Gonna, it's going to go to the highest levels of everything. And I, I want to see. The, I want to see the high fruit taken it's down. It's going to happen because God's going to show Himself powerful to everyone. Yeah. Before the end comes. Absolutely. And then there's still some that will choose evil. Yeah. They're going to be so power hungry or so, you know, hungry for money or whatever that they're they're still going to choose evil. But but right now, the in the last 70 years the lines got really blurred. It really has. really blurred. And and nobody has is saying, "Well, well, why does God do this?" You know, like when you're reading through reading through the Old Testament, you could see how Satan could uh, like with the King James version, you could see where it says, you know, God had him kill all the men, the women, the children, and you're sitting there thinking, man, why would God have him wipe out the little children? Because I, I can promise you this, there was something done that there was no hope. Yeah, you know, like you, there was there was the mingling, there was still the intermingling, the the DNA with all the giants, all that junk was there. Yeah, I used to think it was a disease until I really began to understand Genesis six. Right. Well, and and, and, and you now that they they that. weren't they weren't completely human. That when you look at all those groups, they 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 were they were of the Anakim, they were the mm-hmm. giants, the Zimzumim, and all the other memes <laughs> that were out there that the, were the giants, Zunami or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what it was. There's different names they call them. But I used to think that too because I I know God's a good God, and and if you want to know how long suffering God is, you just look and see what God's put up with, for the sake of even people like me, that something happened to you, and there you're walking around with all kinds of junk open in you that you don't even know is open, and God's mercy is so great He He waited until there was there was a way to show us all a path out of this. He's long suffering, so He's not just going to wipe somebody out and just say, "Well, poof, be gone." like the occult does, he's not going to do something like that. There, there either had to be some plague among them that was going to wipe out humanity or, or uh, something done with the DNA to where they weren't, you know, they couldn't be saved. Something's happened because this is, this is 100% you can rely on this. There's anything makes you think that God is not a good God. There's a deception in there. Absolutely. He is a good father. He's a loving father. He wants to just bless us. We, it would be great. You know, if we could just have God's blessing flow unhindered, and and I think that there's there's a day coming when we can we can flow with His kingdom so much that we're going to see blessings unbelievable. But we've been in this breaking the curse deal, and I'm I'm so encouraged because this is the first time, first time, Mike, in all these years that I've that I've heard God specifically say to me, "You're going to go, you're going to go on to the blessings." You know, there's been blessing, a degree of blessing all along. But there's a day when you get those curses broken completely off. Every connection's broken. You are disconnected from Babylon and Egypt, and you are going on in the full strength of the kingdom of God, and we're getting ready to go. That's what this is about. We're in that 11th month. And, you know, we talked about Benaiah last time. It was the, the mighty man uh, in David's army that, that was used to help uh, enforce the kingship of Solomon because that was God's will. And I'm asking God to raise up 
people that have the courage of Benaiah that yep. will stand there and say, we're going to enforce what God's will is for our president, for our, our Congress, for this nation, for the judicial system. We're going to see that raised up. There's mighty men of courage that God's getting ready to raise up. They're going to have people backing them in prayer. This, this body of Christ is getting ready to get shook free of some stuff, and we're going to be able to flow together. There's going to be respect among, among elders because the elders have proved themselves to be battle you know, tested. And so there, God's getting ready to rearrange some things. And it, now in the process, I'm not going to say that this is going to be easy because we are in the shifting and the shaking and the revealing of everything that's evil. You're going to know what pastor is what pastor. You're going to know who's who. You're going to see what's what. Uh, people that are teaching heresies are going to be exposed. I mean, it's it's going to be a real shaking time, and it's not going to be easy to watch, and you're going to see many people pass away, and it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, but I am telling you, we've got to go through that to get to that promised place, and then yeah. we're going to see the power of God move like nothing you've ever seen. We're going to see the dead raised. We're going to see limbs grow out. We're going to see this. God didn't show me just all bad stuff when he showed me what was happening. He was saying, if my people will pray, this bad stuff can be overridden by these wonderful things. Yes. And I, I think one of the things I'm even seeing transition, I know that Carl Gallup and Mike Spaulding and, and I have talked about it, and I was talking about it with the Devin Stewart from Livestreams TV. There are a lot of us older ones that God is saying, okay, now what you used to do, you know, like with Carl being a pastor and Mike being a pastor, uh, they're, they're now transitioning. They're getting ready to hand that over to the younger generation, not to retire, but now to become real teachers to teach this next generation. Right. I, know, I know that uh, Carl is like I, that we have a, a passion to, uh, to write what God has put within our hearts that we have learned over the years, uh, so much so that we're beginning to lay down other things that we have been known for. Uh, to lay down, Mike's doing the same thing, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. and I know there are many because I, I I'm kind of hearing the same thing when I go to a lot of the conferences and I'm able to speak with many of the speakers is that there's this transition going there on. There is. It's a big transition too because we're there's going to be a transition from what is what we have always considered the definition of a pastor. Always what we've always considered to be a pastor is just the most loving person that would lay down their life for the sheep, which is which is an absolute necessity for a pastor i'm not saying that but they have got to learn to take up their staff yeah and be able to fight the wolves off and i think one of the things we've looked at is that the because I, I i read a lot of the old pastors like spurge and a lot mm -hmm. of the others uh they didn't take a lot of flack and they could they could di differentiate between a sheep a wolf mm -hmm. and a goat well and how how hard is that discernment now it is. because back in those days they didn't have all this mind control they didn't have walls built to where you couldn't by, by your discernment, see what's in a person. You have to wait till the anointing chips away at that wall, and then finally you go, oh, my, look what's behind the wall. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a more challenging time for any pastor. But, but what would be the key for any pastor that is getting ready to transition to, okay, we're going to be a, a, a group of prayer warriors, is that prayer team. Because no pastor, no, no person that God's using as a leader right now is going to be able to do anything without that essential prayer backing. Yes. You know, that's why, like, when, when I've thought about the healing centers for victims of mind control and different things like that, you need – it was one of the reasons it was so difficult for me. Um, I mean, by God's mercy, I made it through. But but when I was finding out I was, I'm in the middle of we've got that church. Everybody there is looking like they're programmed multiples, and I'm saying, God, what in the world? You know, I've, I'm not even having time to heal me, so somehow block anything in me from being used and help me help me flow in your kingdom. And block everything coming from them to kill us. Yeah, and that, it was. Yeah. A, but what would have been optimum, I can tell you, would have been so wonderful if I'd had prayer backers. Yes. You know, as I was doing what I was doing, I'm, I'm thinking how much easier things would have been if I'd have had a group of even five women that I could have said, will you sit in this room and pray while we're doing deliverance out here, will you? That's that's the kind of thing that's going to be an absolute necessity because this is, is not, and it'll be that way in churches because there'll be people coming. They won't even know they are victims of mind control. They're just going to say, you know, 
pastor, if they'd be honest, they'd probably go in there and say, pastor, I, there's a couple of things going on. There's some part of me wants to seduce you. And then there's another part of me that is sitting here wanting to kill you. And I'm so sorry for this, but that's what's going on in my head. But you I want you to know you have my support. <laughs> yeah, you got my support. <laughs> and I'm sure the pastor's wife would be going, why don't we just go out the back door? You know, like any person. Well, I, I think there's an, I remember years ago when uh, Joel Freeman was, uh, was, uh, doing his doctorate with us, and he wrote a book called, uh, was one of his uh, dissertations called Kingdom Zoology, and his, his lament at the very beginning was, Lord, just give me sheep. I don't care if they're regular sheep, overweight sheep, skinny, underfed sheep, mad sheep, hurt sheep, just as long as they're sheep, Lord, just please. Mm-hmm. Just, and, and so the whole book goes into all the other things that end up in the church that are more zoo than than. Mm-hmm. Uh, pastor, I, I think there's an anointing that God's getting ready to release. But if, if a pastor will truly pick up uh, his his shepherd staff, which goes all the way back to Adam, when, well, this is one of the things that uh, uh, I'm working on I with love my this new book. Teaching you've got on this, this that new thing. Uh, when because what and, and I found it by accident. This this shows mm-hmm. you how God does oh, things because uh, when when in uh, Genesis chapter one twenty eight when. Uh, he, when in, in the King James, it says he was supposed to replenish the earth, which gives the uh, seems to give credence to if there's a gap theory between Genesis one one two. So I pulled out all my lexicons. I was going to drill down into this thing, and I was going to forever settle it. Is it fill or refill? And I even found out the the, the Hebraists uh, are split. Half of them say it doesn't mean refill; it just means to fill, and the other half say it means it's refill. And I didn't discover that. But what I discovered in the historical etymology of the word Malay, which, interesting, by, by just happenstance in English, it is spelled M-A-L-E. It's spelled male, mm-hmm. but it, it's Malay in Hebrew. That when he, when he spoke that to Adam and Eve, it, uh, and, and it also means to consecrate the priesthood. Adam was the first priest. It also is used later on in the Word of God for equipping an army to be confronted in battle and having the armament that they need. Mm-hmm. And so Adam was loaded to the teeth with a staff. And, and you know it's the staff. When you when you look at the Hebrew word Malay, it's made up of three Hebrew letters, Mem, Lamed, Aleph. Mem means water or chaos, kind of like what happened in Gen- between Genesis 1 and 1, 2. Lamed is the staff, is the shepherd's staff. And then on the other side of it, is olive, which is the strength of the ox or the st- or strength. And it can literally be interpreted, the shepherd's staff has the strength to withhold chaos, which was given to Adam that he lost when he fell. When Jesus came, he was the second Adam. He came with his own staff, okay? He didn't, he didn't rely on Adam's staff that he lost. He, he was moving, and that's, why, that's what freaked everybody out. This guy moves in authority like nothing I've ever seen. He was moving the way that Adam should have been able to move before the fall. Mm-hmm. Death, burial, resurrection. As soon as Jesus resurrects, now he had all the authority of his staff, but then he makes this declaration, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. He has a double staff. That's the reason We've always tried to figure out how can we do greater works than Jesus did. And we thought, well, maybe because he said, well, you know, it's the giving of the Holy Spirit. And, and, well, we're never going to have a greater portion of the Holy Spirit than Jesus had because the Bible says he had the Holy Spirit without measure. You, You can't go beyond without measure. Well, maybe it's because there's more of us, you know, than than he he was. But he, he had disciples that was doing things, and they were at all at what was being done. But after the resurrection... He not only had his staff, he had gotten Adam's staff back. And that's now the staff of the kingdom is a double staff that we operate under. And let me tell you something, pastors, there's going to become an anointing, and it's going to really irritate a lot of people because the, the model that we have, current modern-day current uh, church growth ministry, is just get them in, and, and what, what you're having is you're having sheep, you're having goats, you're having wolves. Uh, guys, I get reports from people that uh, are just heartbroken that they send their kids on to Bible college and their kids hook up with, with a mate that was actually a witch or a warlock sent into that Bible college hunting people that had an anointing on their life, getting intertangled in their life and pulling them out of the things of God. And things like that are going on in I the church that, today more than we ever realize. a lot, a lot that happens. So what, uh, what, what's going to happen is God is going to restore the 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 pat the shepherd's staff is for correction as much as it is 
protection. Mm -hmm. Timothy was a pastor that the Apostle Paul in First and Second Timothy, he said the Word of God is for correction, for reproof before you even get the doctrine. And there's, there's going to come a, a true anointing on pastors today, I believe, that God's going to give them supernatural sight that they can tell a sheep from a goat from a wolf. Mm -hmm. And that they're going to have the authority. There, there are changes coming in a lot of churches. Churches are not supposed to be democracies. That's true. Of the will of the people. It's supposed to be the will of God. And any church that is, is, is voting to try to find out what their will is and haven't crucified the flesh and found out what the will of God is are going to be in dangerous territory in the days ahead. And I think it's that way for all of us. Our agendas have got to die. It's the king's agenda. It. It's his purpose. It's his vision. If it's not, the kingdom of God is not only going to fund it, but it's going to make sure that Babylon no longer funds false operations going yeah. on in the body of Christ to skew the vision and, and, the, and, and what true ministry is supposed to look like. Well, I think that, you know, within church bodies, Mike, it's so important to have praying men and women to support pastors. Yes. Because, I mean, I can, I can tell when you're under attack. Like, I can tell, like, when you're not, your, your thoughts aren't as, there's not that Focused. clarity yeah. there. And I always think, man, there's, there's witches sitting and they're trying to affect your mind because th this is real stuff. It's not, oh, they can't affect me. No, they can, they can affect you, especially with technology and all the things that they know now. And uh, I know that just just if I see that with you and I start and you're same thing with me, if if we feel like, you know, we're not on our A game, if we're not frosty, we start praying for each other because a lot of times that's an attack that we don't even recognize. We get so busy. We're thinking, man, there's there's something going on. Um, and so then uh, then we get the clarity back. And so imagine how that would work in in a church, you know, especially with right now, there's so much that we're learning you know, that's being revealed on what the enemy's done. And a lot of churches probably don't even have that information. No. So they're sitting there trying the best that they can, you know, with the information they have. So so God's going to raise up uh, people of prayer to just go in and just bathe those pastors in prayer. Bathe them in prayer. Say, Father, shield them. Cover any doors in their life they don't know about. Just that's that's what I felt like that is, is really giving us an edge on the nation is the prayer going forth for protection. Yes. That, that God would shield uh, the president, cover any doors in his life, uh, use him mightily for God's plans, his purposes, you know, overriding the agendas of the enemy. Uh, because if there's anybody that is not swayed by popular opinion or anything like that, it's President Trump. He, it doesn't seem like he doesn't care. He doesn't care what the media says about him and stuff. And so that's a person that God could easily use to, to just focus in, you know, God give them wisdom. And so and it's I, I really think important. I think it needs to be that way with pastors. I think there's going to be a fresh anointing coming. I think mm -hmm. God's going to raise up a support team. But I also think the uh, the politics of local church is radically going to change. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it's it's going to be, if you're not really centering it on the will of God, there's going to be repercussions. There may not have been in the past, but there's going to be today. Well, that's that's the thing that the point we're at that I've been so concerned about for a long time. And I, I, there's no way of getting around it. I mean, I, um, we're, we're going to see people lose their lives. Yeah. And it's going to be in a massive amount. And um, it will be, I can promise you this, um, it will be because there's, there's no recourse because something, something's going on that, that's just the, either a door's not got covered that Satan has such a massive amount of power pointed at him um, or, you know, they're, they're standing in a place that God cannot let, allow them to stand anymore. I think we're going to see things. Uh, here a few years back, I had one man contact me, and he was sharing about his pastor. And I guess, you know, his pastor, I mean, went through hell and back with everybody. I mean, whenever there was something crazy going on in people's lives, he was a good pastor. He was right there in the middle of it. And then one of his sons got off uh, just on some really crazy stuff and left God and all that. And there was some rumors, well, you know, how can we trust this pastor, blah, 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 blah. And uh, he got up there and he said, listen, this is what's going on with my son. And he, he laid it all out. And he said, now, listen, guys, I've been with you guys and have stood with you and have gone hell and back. Now, I need you to stand with me. Mm -hmm. And this guy started breaking down and crying. He said, that Sunday morning. 
He said all of, of uh, all the congregation except for three got up and they stood with their pastor. Oh, praise God! And the three that had been gossiping and backbiting, there were. He said they they bowed their heads and walked out of the church and never came back again. But then he had their agreement, and he that's had that when agreement. Miracles yes, work. that's, that's when. It, and I and I've not talked to him since. I'm sure that God's got a hold of that kid, and and he's back with you know serving God and stuff. But we're, we're so quick to throw people under the bus, even those that even serve us the best. And uh, uh, the remnant are better than that, Mary. The remnant oh, are yeah. better than yeah. that. The remnant's going to stand there and say, no, nope, we're going to pray. I, I just, I'm such a diehard on giving up on people. I mean, I'll go 10 years, 20 years, just keeping on believing that God's going to do something. Cause I, and, and there's situations where God's told me, that's it. That's all you can do. And I, and I bow my knee to that. I don't try to do it by flesh anymore. I, I think I used to just say, I'm just going to work it up till we can, we can push them out. We'll pull them out. But I, you have to follow the Spirit of the Lord. And that's, it's not by my might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit of the yeah. Lord. And when we follow the Spirit of the Lord, that's when we're going to stay on track. Yeah, and, and, if you, and let me tell you something, guys. If you're listening to this and you have a pastor that loves his people, tries his best to protect the people, and is really teaching the purity of the word, and not going, you know, he may, he may not understand everything about Hebraic heritage yet, no. but, but he's, he's, he's trying his best to teach the word. You need to honor him. Yeah, because there's a real good chance that there, there will be things happen. This is what I'm looking for. There's getting ready to be a great tumult. As that tumult happens, there will be many pastors that stand back and say, I'm going to have to look at some things. Yeah. And then they're going to be open, and, and then God's going to start showing them things. Um, so... The main thing is is support them on God showing them those things that they would they would see it that God would bring it by the, you know by their way so they're gonna say oh that's it there's a revelation there there and they'll pick, I believe that there's a huge amount of people that are getting ready to see the truth it's just we've been in such a blinding period yeah and and blinding blinding and so many people especially like in the Baptist churches are descendants of Freemasons the pastors are and their fathers and their grandfathers and they take oaths to be blinded. Yeah. And, uh, that, and so, that's the conundrum I've actually shared with uh, and I talked with other ministry leaders. You have the Baptist church, which are so infiltrated with Masons. You have the charismatic church that now is so infiltrated uh, with either Kabbalah or New Age. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's really, really, that, that's why I think God is raising up a third option, the remnant, wherever yeah, they are. Yeah, and there, there's, there's always balance. You know, we need the supernatural works of Almighty God. We need the, the real signs and wonders. We need those things, and, and we're going to see them. But we have to have the discernment to know which side it's coming from. Exactly. And not and, flow with something And just because it's a sign and wonder doesn't mean it's from God because there's also false signs and wonders. That's why we got to be thoroughly yes, balanced in the Word of we God. we got to stick to the Word. If it contradicts the Word of God, yep. then that's, that's when you say, no, nope, I'm not going to follow that. So, guys, there's this transition coming, and I, I think one of the things in my spirit I'm feeling uh, we, we can't go back to the old ways. The old ways got us into trouble they, the, the, of, of being very at ease in Zion, if you will, and just letting things slide. Because what, what, what you see in the pattern in Deuteronomy is that, okay, they, they had to face, there was, there, was, there was Og, and there was another one that they, that they had to face uh, that was king of, of was, it, was it just Og? I, th- I think there were two, if I'm remembering oh, correctly. They were, hang on, I'll tell you. Let's see. That's why we're a team. Yes, it, it tells you down through here. It goes, um, Og of Bashan, which dwelt in Ashtaroth. And let's see, where is the other one? It may be on down. Well, there were, I mean, they they had to go against all of these kings. Yeah, that were that were all either giants or, or something related to that. Oh, and Sihon. Sihon. Sihon, the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon and Og, the king of Bashan, yep. which dwelt at Ashtaroth in Edrel. And so even before they crossed the Jordan, they had learned warfare. We're learning it now. And so after we, in obedience, crossed the Jordan, then you start reading in the book of Joshua some really cool stuff about how it, God had to, the, none of those kids, none of the men had been circumcised that were that were being raised up. Uh, so they, they had circumcision. Uh, they circumcised, reestablishing covenant. They they celebrated Passover. Uh, there were there was some alignment things going on even even when the uh, the uh, the captain of the Lord of Hosts, which I believe was Jesus, appeared to Joshua, and Joshua says, "Whose side are you on?" And the response was, "Jack, you better check whose side you're on." 
See, there was this attitude adjustment. It's God because mm-hmm. it ended up being the captain of the Lord's hosts, you know. Mm-hmm. And and so there was this there was this change that's going on out, even after we cross. It's a new level of warfare mm-hmm. that it can't be out of fleshly carnal desires or our own agendas or our own personal pet doctrines or whatever else. It's what the king is demanding in that day and hour, reestablishing that covenant, making sure that everything is under the blood, that I'm aligned and I'm, and I'm fully established in who I am in him. And then we're going to start to see Jericho's coming down. We're starting to start to see giants Boy, coming that's down. that's right. That Jericho story is so, so powerful. So yeah, well, powerful. We'll leave that for another yeah, day. Yeah, we're going to leave that on. But, I mean, we're heading toward, you know, the 12th month. Yeah. We're and gonna, so, we're and twelve is, is we're and gonna, twelve is the, the the number of divine government, mm-hmm. and then we have Purim going on because it and was established during divine you know, government. That was a that was a pagan king, yeah, that God used to save His people. And he I'm, can he can take situations that would look impossible and turn them around. And so, let's just as we as we go through this next week, we're actually doing this podcast on Sunday um, because it's set on. Facebook that they're as they fix some things the power may go off in different places so even though though we have it on right now I don't know if it might be on tomorrow the next day it's different times and so we uh, we wanted to go ahead and get this out on Sunday so he could get it edited and out even even as we're doing this podcast I heard a big rumble and it was branches and ice hitting the roof of the building we're gonna have to have some um, tree trimmers come, come and, stuff. and take off some limbs of a building a house behind us i know when we were here yesterday i thinking hey the electric's on i may be able to do that interview that i had with josh peck last night and all of a sudden boom oh, we heard this big boom of transformer blue <laughs> i think they were blowing all over the place because the the trees now back where we live used in uh, 2006 it was just massive limbs all over and they took down power lines well we didn't get that much where where we were we had a few limbs coming it was down a from, lot over here though but it was it was looked like a war zone over here didn't it it did and so thank god there's nothing nothing happened wrong with the building everything's safe thank god for protection and uh, but we did want to get it out early so we could just encourage you guys to just keep on declaring how great god is that it doesn't matter what goes on around us He's in control. Yep. He's in control of your life. If you're seeking him for healing, he is going to answer that prayer. He is going to provide what you need. He is raising up people for this time that we're heading into, and God's people are going to be just fine. Yeah. Correct us where we need to be correct us. Yes, and I pray Readjust that, Lord, us, realign us. us where we need to be yes, realigned so that we line wrong. up with King Jesus. Uh-huh. Father is our prayer. And let that, let that anointing flow forth to empower pastors and empower true men of God, Father, that are in the fivefold ministry, that they would raise up with a fresh anointing and a fresh word for the rim that that's going to empower them to cross the Jordan and take the land. Yes. In Jesus' name. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative.